So Nuclear Tech Mod has introduced a brand new particle accelerator. This time the design is modular. So think of it like the RBMK or the PWR. There are different components. They interact with each other. So you can customize the particle accelerator according to your needs, according to the particles that you need to make. In this design I have here, there are two loops, one small, one big. It can process anything from antimatter all the way to Higgs boson. However, for the heavier particles, they can't really be done because the momentum in the coils is not enough. Now, there is a lever which can toggle the bigger loop on and off. So the smaller loop can process antimatter and the sherbidium. And if I toggle the lever on, then it activates the second loop, which increases the momentum by a lot. And now we can process muon, tachyons and Higgs boson. So yeah, that's the design. And there are timestamps in the description because this video is going to be a long one. So anyways, without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. All right, time to familiarize ourselves with the six components that make this accelerator. So we have the particle source, the particle detector, RF cavity, quadrupole magnets, dipole magnets, beam line, and finally the coils that go in these two magnets. So we start with the particle source. Now this one will shoot particles inside loops where they will get their momentum increased and finally it will end up in the detector. So it has uh, six slots for input output three on each side like this and you need this because not only you need to get the particles in and the particles out but also it needs coolant and this coolant is perfluoromethyl so cold perfluoromethyl and normal perfluoromethyl now for the detector the gui is kind of the same it needs coolant it needs power and it will detect the particles and if the recipe is correct it will give you an output so those are the two lights for temperature or the coolant and power and these are the two end parts now for increasing the momentum we start with rf cavity now when a particle travels through the rf cavity its momentum will increase by 100 points it is uh, or basically it is gonna need power and coolant in order to work but yeah this momentum number is stated right here for every particle so for example we need 300 momentum we need to loop the particle around three times in a single rf cavity or what you can do is place down three RF cavities and when the particle passes through all three of them, it will have 300 momentum at the very end. So that is how you speed up the particle. But if you read here, it also says that 100 points of defocus will be added every time a particle passes. And if the defocus is 1000, the particle will crash. And also the detector, it needs a defocus value of zero before a particle enters here. So how do we remove that defocus that the RF cavity adds? That is where the quadrupole magnets come in. So the quadrupole magnets, what they do is they take in these large coils and they remove 100 points of defocus from the particle when they pass through them. So the way this cycle is going to go is that the particle source will shoot particles into an RF cavity where their momentum and their defocus will increase by 100 points. And before entering the detector, these particles will pass through a quadrupole magnet where the defocus value will be removed, but the momentum will be maintained so that the detector can actually process them. Now, these gold coils, as you can see, they have a quadrupole operational range. And this range stands for the amount of momentum that the particles need in order to be produced or what the coils can handle, basically. So, for example, antimatter requires a momentum value of 300, which can be easily handled by a gold coil. But for muon, we need a momentum value of 2500, which can't be handled by gold, but can be handled by NBTI. So this is why the quadrupole operational range is important. Now, when we are on the topic of coils, the dipole will also need coils in order to work, but the dipole can be used to make loops. It has three options, one for when the particle is traveling below speed, the second option when particle is traveling above the speed, and third one when particle is traveling above the speed, and it also has a redstone signal. Now you can set the sides right here by rotating them and these sides by the way they turn according to the direction you are facing and the number below in the green box that you see is the amount of momentum or the number of momentum. So uh, with the dipole magnets there is also the distance penalty. So for example if we take gold coil and we place it in a dipole then the minimum length that it needs to travel before it ends up in another dipole is 15 blocks. Now here I only have three or basically three beam line sets. So that's nine blocks. This will result in a power penalty. 
So we will basically consume more power in order to process the same recipe. All right, now let's talk about the coolant needed in order to make all of these blocks functional. This one is perfluoromethyl and it's made by combining fluoride with unsaturated hydrocarbons and a petroleum gas in an industrial mixer. Compressing this once will turn it into one pressure unit and one pressure unit per fluoromethyl when compressed again will give you cold per fluoromethyl at negative 150 degrees Celsius and this will be consumed constantly by every machine or basically every component in the accelerator at a rate of 5 millibucket per tick. So now let's start making the accelerator right. We first place down the particle source and in front of it we place down a dipole magnet. By the way, this one is facing in the west. So this dipole is going to have a gold coil in here and the momentum value right here is set to zero. And for the direction, we are going to leave it as it is. Now here, it's going to end up in the very first RF cavity. And in order to avoid the length penalty, I'm going to use beam lines because beam lines are used to increase the length without using any other components. Beam lines don't use any power or coolant whatsoever. Now the second dipole, it will loop it in the west direction or in the front. This one will also have a gold coil and the momentum will be set to zero. Now we further extend this loop and in the middle here, we will have a quadrupole. The quadrupole magnet will have a gold coil in order to cancel out the defocus. And here we have a third dipole magnet. Now as the defocus is already cancelled out, we can set this as the output. So the maximum uh, or the most expensive recipe for this loop is going to be the anti shirbidium which requires a momentum value of 400. So I'm going to set this as 400. If the particle is below the speed, it's going to go in the left side back into the loop. If it is above the speed, then it's going to go to the right hand side. For now, we don't really need to touch the redstone part of this entire thing. Now, as this dipole is already the output dipole, we are going to set a particle detector on the right hand side, but you will notice that it's one block higher than where it needs to be. So we need to dig the ground below by one. We need to make a nine by five cavity. And now the detector will be in place in line with the entire particle accelerator. I don't know why this design is like this, but it is what it is. Next up, we continue the loop. And this time it's only beam lines going into a dipole magnet. And this dipole magnet once again gold coil and set its direction to go back into the very first dipole that we placed which is going to be in the east direction and now connecting beam lines back here this is our entire loop complete for uh, four of the dipole magnets one quadrupole magnet and one rf cavity so that's it that's the loop complete every time a particle will travel through this loop it's going to gain 100 momentum because we only have one RF cavity. Now the piping work can be done according to basically whatever suits your needs. You can place down an infinite barrel and call it a day. What I like to do is place down pipes on the diagonals like this and then connect them because this way if I need to edit this loop or basically add more components to it, it becomes very easy. So one inside the diagonal place down uh, fluid pipes for cold perfluoromethyl connect the particle detector, particle source and every other component. This is important because every component need this cooler. Without it, the entire particle accelerator is not going to function. And the same goes for the normal perfluoromethyl. So making sure that you have connections set everywhere. And uh, the final step is going to be placing down cables. So cables are going to be for power. And this way we take care of both the coolants and power. Now, even without supplying it with power, uh, perfluoromethyl is going to be constantly consumed. So these machines, they will constantly consume perfluoromethyl whenever you connect it. So make sure you have the compressor loop ready. So anyways, that's the cable work done. And this is how it's going to look like, or it should look like. Supplying it with power, the compressors with power, this will make cold perfluoromethyl. But for now, it's going to get supplied into our entire system. But it will build up because we are processing it at a rate of 2000 millibuckets per second. And this system is only consuming what 800 millibuckets per second. And with overdrive upgrades, it will fill up very, very fast. And 
yeah you won't really have to worry about it that much so with perfluoromethyl in every component and the temperature down uh, make sure you have the connections once again i am repeating this because if you are doing this in survival if you don't have perfluoromethyl or any of the components are missing coolant power then you are going to lose the particles like here i have missed power cables somewhere i have missed the perfluoromethyl cable so yeah make sure that you have connected everything properly so now we are actually ready to run this design to test it out so first things first, we are going to supply the entire particle accelerator with power using a spark energy storage block. And now make sure to place down empty particle capsules in the detector. Because if you don't have this, then you won't get any output. And once again, your raw materials will be lost. So for antimatter, we have one copper ion capsule and one hydrogen ion capsule. And that's it. We have a success with a momentum value of 400. And make sure to get these empty particle capsules out and in the detector here we have a very first antimatter capsule now if we were to basically change the value of momentum because antimatter requires only 300 right so if i set the momentum value to 300 here then this accelerator can actually process the antimatter but it won't be able to process anti shear medium so that's it antimatter once again a success but if i try to process anti shear medium by placing down two antimatters it will just keep on running and running because the momentum value is stuck at 300 and we are not going to get any output here so that is why it's important to set the momentum value to the biggest recipe or the most expensive recipe that you are going to process or you can change it every time if you want to conserve power Anyways, once again, I'm going to set the value to 400 and this time with two antimatters, we are going to produce an anti shear medium. All right, now for more expensive recipes, the large cold coil is not going to suffice because the momentum value is not enough. As you can see, tachyons, muons, Higgs boson, all of these have a momentum value higher than what the gold coil can supply, which is where the NBTI coil comes in handy. So we first start with the dipole magnet, which serves as the output. We set it so that the redstone is going to a redstone signal basically is going to send the particle forward in the north direction and this northern direction will make it end up in the second dipole here which is going to be the entrance to a second loop which is where once again a redstone signal is going to come below it and now after setting the frequency we also need to set this second dipole which was configured like this to a value of 1500 momentum because this is the uh, low point of the NBTI and with the redstone signal in place we need to output this to the right hand side which is going to be once again the west direction so this will be our entrance to a second loop and now when we flick a lever these both of these receivers the redstone receivers should activate and this will send the particle towards the second loop otherwise it will keep on rotating in the first loop so with the frequency set you can see both of the receivers are receiving signals and yeah this is the activator for the second loop now for the second loop the process is going to be the same aside from the fact that we are going to use the nbti coils so we place down a beam and from here a dipole magnet this dipole magnet will have an NBTI coil momentum value of zero and we need to send the particle in the west because that's where we are going forward. Here we need one RF cavity but this time the length needs to be 21 blocks instead of 15. That is why we need more beam poles and after that we place down another dipole and this dipole will send the particle towards the right and this time instead of placing down four beam poles we need to place down six along with a single quadrupole magnet once again this equates to 21 blocks and the nbti coil in here the third dipole this one will serve as an output so here we actually need a condition that if the particle is moving above the speed which is going to be 6500 because that's the most expensive recipe which is going to be higgs boson then this is going to end up in a particle detector exactly the same thing that we did previously so that's one condition set and for the second condition we just need to loop it back so this time seven beam poles equating to 21 blocks 
a dipole with NBTI coil and seven blocks again like this and that's the loop complete so here are the configurations you can see for the directions like this and here we need no redstone because there is no third coil i'm going to place down a transmitter with the same frequency and set it after connecting all of the pipes and cables like we did previously this second loop will also be active it will have or it should have coolant in every single component along with power and now by flicking the lever we activate this loop so by placing down one antimatter along with the hydrogen ion capsule you can see this is going to take significantly long time but it is going to result in a success with a momentum value of 6500 because that is the max value that we have set it to so now if we see what the combination of antimatter and hydrogen gave us it's going to be the muon capsule now interestingly you can actually see the momentum value rising so here you can see running the momentum value is slowly 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 going up because we only have a single rf coil so what if you want to upgrade your entire particle accelerator well we just need to introduce more rf coils into the system and along with this more quadruple magnets so doing that is uh, actually i have not tried out the energy values for this or the energy calculations for this but in this loop if i introduce three more rf cavities and connect them all accordingly and for three rf cavities we will need three quadruple magnets now make sure that always always and always a particle before it enters the final or the detector you should always make it pass through the quadrupole magnet so that all of its uh, what you call it the defocus it cancels out so that's it that's the loop set three quadrupole magnets going into the detector along with three rf cavities making the particle go around so this time you will see that the momentum value it rises up very quickly as soon as the particle enters the second loop not the first loop because the first loop still has only one rf cavity see the jump when it basically went past the 1500 mark that is when it entered the second loop and that's when all of the three rf cavities started working so that is how you can upgrade your particle accelerator and also add more loops for the bscco coil and finally the chlorophyte coils so i hope you guys enjoyed this video you learned something from it uh if you have any questions regarding this leave them in the comment section below but this entire thing is also very new for me anyways i will see you guys in the next one till then my guys peace out and stay safe